In this tutorial, we'll see why we need Maven for development and see how IntelliJ IDEA makes the interaction with Maven effortless and intuitive, but also more effective. For this, we'll create a new Maven project and explain the steps we make. Finally, we'll explain what features IntelliJ IDEA provides on top of Maven. Maven objective is to simplify the build process and then help us to automate it. It handles compilation, documentation, distribution, dependencies, releases, and other tasks seamlessly. The primary goal of Maven is to provide the developer with the following. A comprehensive model for projects, which is reusable and easier to recognize. And plugins and tools to handle the build tasks. First, we'll create a new Maven project and explain the steps we take. Also, along the way, we'll specify how IntelliJ IDEA actually helps making the Maven-related tasks less complicated. If no project is currently open in IntelliJ, then we'll click on New Project on the welcome screen. Then, we'll select Maven from the options from the left. Here, you can specify what SDK or JDK you have available on your computer, or you can use the default one that comes with IntelliJ. Next, if you want to use a predefined project template, you can use what's called an archetype. IntelliJ IDEA provides some project templates from various sources. Quick tip here. Most windows in IntelliJ IDEA use type ahead search and let us search for text if we just start typing. We don't have to look for a search bar. For example, if we search for the Maven archetype quick start, then we simply type quick start even without pressing enter. This can be quite useful when you can't remember the exact or full name of an archetype or when there are a lot of options to choose from. We give this a name, Maven project, Here, we can choose the location of the project. Then, we can specify the Maven coordinates that are added to the POM file. The group ID. Here, we usually specify the company domain using the same convention for defining the package of a new project. This means it starts with a reversed domain name. For instance, org.example or com.example. The artifact ID is basically the name of the project and then the version of the artifact for the project. IntelliJ bundles Apache Maven so you don't have to install it to use it. This usually works well. However, if you're working with a team on a project, all the team members will probably want to work with the same version of Maven. In IntelliJ IDEA, switching to a different version of Maven is no problem. When creating a new project, you can specify the Maven version to use by modifying the home path. If you are creating a project using a Maven archetype, then IntelliJ IDEA will display the Maven settings. Here, we can specify the configuration file for Maven if we have special settings. And here, we can choose the directory where Maven will download the artifacts and dependencies we need for our project. Also, you can check the archetype properties. After we click Finish, IntelliJ will go ahead and prepare the project. This includes downloading the dependencies for this template project and setting up the directories. IntelliJ IDEA creates the Maven project based on the POM XML file. As you may know, the Maven project structure and contents are declared in the POM XML file, which is the fundamental unit of the entire Maven system. This includes the compiler and the target versions of Java and all the necessary dependencies to start working. The version of Java specified in the pomxml file overrides the version specified in the IntelliJ project. As we can see, some archetypes are not up to date with the latest Java or framework versions. For example, here we use the Maven Quick Start archetype and it has an older version of the Java compiler and runtime. So, these values override the values we defined in IntelliJ IDEA when creating the project. To fix this issue, we should modify it. In this case, we can search and replace command plus R to find and replace text. The Java version 1.7, 
with the version we want to use in our project. Every time we manually change the pomxml file in the editor, we need to load the changes. IntelliJ IDEA displays a notification icon in the right part of the editor suggesting exactly that, to load the Maven changes so that they are applied to the project. However, if we want to control the importing process of the project, we can manually trigger the action. In the Maven tool, right-click on the project and from the menu, we select the reload project. On invoking this action, IntelliJ IDEA parses the POM file and then changes the project structure. Also, this means that the next time you reload your project, IntelliJ IDEA will remove the added dependencies through other tools like the project structure dialog, command and semicolon, since IntelliJ IDEA considers the Maven configuration file as the single source of truth. Furthermore, IntelliJ IDEA cannot reload just a part of your project. It reloads the whole project, including subprojects and dependencies. If we want to reflect the changes we make in the POM file automatically into the project, we could go to the settings of IntelliJ, Command and Comma, Build Tools, and select Reload Project after changes in the build script, and also select For All Changes. One of the most used features in IntelliJ IDEA, auto-completion, is also available in the POMXML file as well. We can complete tags and their values too. For example, if we want to add the Spring Boot starter dependency, we can go ahead and type the artifact ID, that is Spring minus Boot minus starter, the group ID, which is suggested, and the latest version, which is also suggested. The dependencies will be automatically added to the project. Also, you might already be familiar with looking into the structure of your classes using the Structure Tool window in IntelliJ IDEA. However, we can use the same tool window to browse to the structure of your POM XML file. This can be useful when the POM file gets really large and we want to quickly navigate to its properties, dependencies, plugins, and other sections. To hide it or display it, we can use the same shortcut as for classes command plus 7. And to switch to the project view, we use command plus 1. Also, I like to hide the tools from the sides to have a cleaner workspace and only invoke them when necessary via shortcuts. By using the Maven tool window, we are able to reload all Maven projects, show the dependencies as a diagram, and we can use it to even execute goals. We can also use the Maven tool window to view the Maven lifecycle phases, plugins, run configurations, check dependencies, and more. But first, let's understand the Maven build lifecycle, or Maven build phases. Maven is built around the concept of a build lifecycle. For example, the default one handles your project deployment and the clean lifecycle handles the project cleaning. Each of these build lifecycles is defined by a different list of build phases, wherein a build phase represents a stage in the lifecycle. Maven always keeps the order of the execution phases. For example, if you execute the command Maven package, then Maven executes all the phases prior to package including the package phase in sequential order. Also, if you execute Maven clean install, then Maven executes up to the clean phase of the clean lifecycle, and after that, it executes up to the install phase of the default lifecycle. You should always select the phase that matches your outcome. If you want your jar file, just run the package. If you want to run the unit test, just run the test phase. We can use the Maven tool window to select and execute multiple life cycles for the project. Let's say clean and install. For this, hold the control key and select clean and install. When we click on run, the run tool windows appears and displays a collection of metrics, like the current execution phase and the time it takes to finish. Looks like we have an error. 
we see the completed phases mark with a check mark, allowing us to easily track which ones have been run successfully or not. The error says invalid target 111. This is because there is no such version. It should be just 11. Command and error. Run again. We can click on the individual phases to view the messages specific to the execution of that phase. It's easy to read through the messages related to a phase rather than wading through all the messages in one big chunk. In IntelliJ, by default, we see only the most frequently used Maven lifecycles or phases. However, if we want more fine-grained control, we can view more phases than the ones listed here by unchecking Show Basic Phases Only. With the Run Anything feature invoked by pressing twice on the control key, we can execute multiple goals with a simple command. Furthermore, with code completion, we don't even need to remember all the available options. For example, we can run it with a specific profile. However, what's interesting about the Run Anything feature is that we can define custom run configuration and then we can easily invoke them. Usually, all the team members need to be working with the same Maven build or same run configuration. For example, when running the build, we might want to pass certain properties. Clean verify, minus D, some property and the value, minus D, some other property and the value. As you can see, in IntelliJ IDEA, we can create a new configuration, define the Maven goals we want to run for them, add specific configuration, rename them, and store them as project files. Let's say we already configure the integration test for this application, so let's call it app underscore one integration test. As a side note, we know that the integration tests take quite a long time to run, so as a result, we should exclude them from the default build lifecycle and execute them separately. Furthermore, we can also overwrite the default directory where the configurations are stored. Saving these configuration files to your shared repository helps you share the run configurations across the team. Finally, to invoke this configuration, we double tap on the control key, type for application one IT, and we just run the integration tests. We can use the Maven tools to download documentation and source code for the dependencies in our project. Let's see what we mean by that. For this, we'll create an entity class called user. We navigate to the Java package and create new class. We name it user and we use a template to create it. We'll add the necessary dependency directly from the class. Here, we have as attributes the ID and the name of the user, but we also have some annotation specific to Lombok library and Spring JPA. To see what this annotation actually do, we can render the documentation directly from IntelliJ. However, if the source code isn't available, then this feature only show us the details of the method signature. Likewise, if we want to browse through the implementation details, we need to download the sources. What we see here is the decompiled version of the class, which might not always be the same with the source. So, to download the source code, we can directly click here as suggested, or we can go to the Maven window, select the dependency, and click Download Sources and Documentation. Now, IntelliJ uses the sources to provide documentation for the libraries. This is very useful when writing code and we need to know how the library is implemented or when debugging and when we want to trace inside a library. Also, when we move the cursor on a library method, we can press Ctrl plus J 
in order to view the quick help pop-up. If we want to download the documentation and sources for all projects, we can do it from here. Most developers keep their tool window bars constantly on display because it seems to be the fastest way to access various tool windows. However, we can claim the real estate used by the tool window bars and quickly access tool windows like the Maven tool by using its shortcut. Assigning a shortcut to a tool window like Maven takes a couple of steps and they are the same steps we need to make to assign a shortcut to any tool window. We use the Find Action feature by pressing Ctrl Shift and A, search for Maven and we look for the one with the description view slash tool windows. As it says in the dialog, we can press Alt and Enter to assign a shortcut. For the Maven window, I use Alt or Option key and M. There are other ways to assign a shortcut. For example, in IntelliJ IDEA settings, we can search for key map, search for Maven tool window, and then simply assign a shortcut to it. When we see a list of dependencies in our project, it can be easy to miss the transitive ones. One cool feature in IntelliJ IDEA is the ability to view all the dependencies visually. There are multiple ways to access this feature. Since we already are in the editor window, we can access the context menu by right click and then access diagrams and finally select show dependencies. In this case, we see a conflict regarding Spring Boot starter dependency. It comes one time from the Spring Boot starter data GPA dependency and in this case we call it transitive dependency and one time it is explicitly defined in the POM. So, in this case, we can simply delete the dependency from the POM. We reload the project. and the main conflict was solved. However, this feature is useful to see more easily if we got other dependency version than we expect and therefore have other behavior than we intended. We can also save this visual representation as an image and share it. In summary, IntelliJ IDEA provides a wide variety of features that allows us to work on the Maven projects more easily and efficiently.